Uh, file item 45, Senate Bill 612. Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Bill 612 by Senator Jackson and acting to hazardous materials. Senator Jackson. Thank you, uh, Madam President and colleagues. This is a technical bill that updates a number of the health and safety code provisions regarding the management of hazardous waste that certified unified program agencies, otherwise belovedly known as COOPAs, are charged with overseeing. The assembly amendments require the Department of Toxic Substance Control to provide program guidance on hazardous waste counting through regulations. The bill makes other technical changes such as clarifying that the provisions of the bill related to the Medical Waste Management Act apply to COOPAs and that the Department of Public Health must follow the Administrative Procedures Act. This is all fascinating stuff, but to those who manage hazardous waste, it is critical that we update this. We have all the stakeholders who have come together. This is the third year I have done uh, this bill, and I think we're just about wrapped up in dealing with almost all of the hazardous waste regulatory proceedings that needed to be uh, updated uh, for those who are in the hazardous waste business, for those who are subject to the uh, uh, vagaries uh, when hazardous waste is not properly cleaned up. This has received strong bipartisan support in the assembly. There is no opposition. And with that, I would respectfully ask your I vote on concurrence in Senate, excuse me, in assembly amendments. Any discussion or debate? Any discussion or debate on this measure? Seeing none, please call the roll. Allen? Aye. Aye. Anderson? Aye. Aye. Bates? I Bell, I Berryhill, I Block, I Canella, I De Leon, Fuller, I Gaines, I Galgioni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, Jackson. I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Moni, I Morlock, I Morell, I Wynn, I Nilsson, I Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, I Stone, I Vidak, I Wachowski, I walk. Walk I. Call the absent members, please. De Leon. Huff. I 38, no zero. Assembly amendments are concurred in. Senator Jackson, uh, are, are we going to proceed to file item 112? Would, please. Excuse me, Senator Jackson, one Senate, one moment. Senator Mining, for what purpose do you rise? Just condition of the file. I just, now that most of the members are back, if I could just give a quick update. Please. Members, uh, Thank you. we covered 40 Senate bills on concurrence this morning. Uh, we have 50 assembly bills eligible to be taken up today. So our objective is gonna be to work through those eligible assembly bills this afternoon. Uh, if any of you are gonna leave the floor, we're gonna keep voting on bills unless you touch base with the minority leader or with me to make arrangements to put bills on call. And an excused absence would be going to a committee on the other side uh, or make your case, but not to just leave the floor and then wanna come back. We wanna work rapidly this afternoon, make progress, and try to get out at a decent hour this evening, but we're prepared to work into the evening to get the job done. So uh, thank you, Madam President, for allowing for that condition of file interruption. Uh, thank you very much. Senator Fuller, for what purpose do you rise? Uh, condition of the file. Proceed. And just wanted to add on to that, uh, all of our members, we appreciate that also, that it's, um, there's starting to be a little consternation about where you are when you're voting. We went back through the rules, and you need to be at least outside where the desk can see you coming in that the door. Um, and if 
And if that gets to be a problem and some people get called on it and other people don't call on it, we'll, we'll talk about it later. But uh, that helps everybody who's listening know that the technical area is where the desks are on the floor and they've been great about seeing us along the edge and somewhere just right on the inside of the curtains and just on this side. And so for clarification, Senator Fuller, what about the media bay? Does that count um, according to the rules? We are actually at, the media bay is not something that's normally in the rules, but I think we've all been using it to eat and whatever else. And so as long as the presiding officers are comfortable with using the media bay, that is absolutely probably the best, best opportunity because they can sort of see it. You don't have to be seen, but if you, if you start getting halfway back through the door, then then people feel unfairly treated if they're inside the door but called off uh, or just inside the door. So try, try to be seen. Thank you. Thank you very much, members, for that clarification. Appreciate it. Um, Mr. Secretary, did you already read? No. Okay, great. We're going to go back to file item 112. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 864 by Assemblymember Williams, an acting to oil spill response. Thank you, Senator Jackson. Thank you, uh, Madam President and colleagues. This is another bill by my colleague and uh, uh, Assembly Member uh, Doss Williams in response to the oil spill that occurred on May 19th of this year over our coast that spilled uh, over 101,000 gallons of oil that affected uh, miles of coastline, thousands of businesses, uh, as well as animals and uh, wildlife. The area impacted by the spill um, are areas that are such pristine coastline uh, that we have tried so hard to preserve for our enjoyment and the enjoyment of all the people of California. It was devastating to see this on the beaches, and uh, my colleague, Assemblymember Williams, has introduced AB 864 in response, which requires pipelines in environmentally sensitive areas along the coast to use the best available technology, including but not limited to a system of leak detection technology, automatic shutoff valves, or remote controlled sectionalized block valves to reduce the amount of oil released in an oil spill in order to protect as best we can our state's uh, pristine waters and wildlife and economic uh, engine. This measure sets higher standards of protection for thousands of miles of intrastate pipelines along our coast, of which there are many because of the offshore drilling that then brings uh, oil by pipeline uh, into the land and then up to the uh, All-American Pipeline. The bill would require the state fire marshal to determine what is the best available technology standards and to assess the pipeline operator's risk analysis to ensure that interstate pipelines provide protection to our coastal areas and wildlife. This measure will help protect state waters, our wildlife, our beautiful coastline, and our economy during these sad and hope hopefully infrequent, if non-existent, as we can only hope, uh, instances. And with that, I would respectfully ask for your aye vote. Thank you so much. Any discussion or debate? Any discussion or debate? Seeing none, Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. I Anderson, I Bates, I Bell, Berryhill, Block, I Canella, I De Leon, Fuller, No Gaines, No Galgioni, I Glazer, I Hall, I Hancock, I Hernandez, I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Wesso, I Huff, Jackson. I Lada, I Leno, I Leva, I Lou, McGuire, I, Lou I, Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Monning, I Morlock, No Morell, Win, I Nilsson, No Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, 
Stone. Aye. Vidak. Aye. Wykowski. Aye. aye. Walk. Walk aye. Call the absent members. Bell. Aye. Berryhill. De Leon. Huff. Morell. No. Runner. Ayes 31, noes 5, the measure passes. Final item, is that uh, file item 116, Senator that is Jackson? Correct, Madam Mr. President. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 559 by Assemblymember Lopez, an act relating to monarch butterflies. Senator Jackson. Thank you, Madam President and, and colleagues. AB 559 would allow the Department of Fish and Wildlife to take action to conserve uh, monarch butterflies and the special habitats necessary for their successful migration. Currently, there are no laws in place to protect them. I previously presented this bill to you, but it has come back uh, before you again with amendments that address concerns that some stakeholders had raised. As I stated uh, previously, the loss of these extraordinary butterflies would have grave consequences, not just to the environment, but also to the many cities, including mine, whose local economies depend on the migration of these majestic creatures for tourism. And I would again like to invite you all up to the Elwood Mesa outside of Goleta to see this extraordinary um, uh, grove where these butterflies come uh, from uh, November to I think it's March to mate. It's just quite an extraordinary sight. This measure will ensure that the department uses the best science available when planning to conserve the monarch butterfly. The bill has no opposition. I respectfully ask for your aye vote. Any discussion or debate? Senator Stone. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I rise in opposition to AB 559. We have ways in which we list species that are endangered. In Riverside County, we have a very successful habitat conservation plan that seeks to uh, mitigate uh, the desecration, if you will, of over 120 species of uh, fauna and flora. Uh, the monarch butterfly is a beautiful butterfly, but there are no studies to show that they're threatened in any way. Mm -hmm. And this is gonna send, uh, I think, a very confusing message to local governments that uh, may incorporate some monarch butterfly habitat into their general plans in such a way that it causes uh, inverse condemnation issues and lawsuits. So the appropriate route to protect the species is to make a request to the federal government to put it on an endangered species list and so that everybody's playing by the same rules. So for those reasons, I oppose AB 559. Thank you very much. Senator Anderson. Members, our, uh, our analysis shows that this could cost in excess of a million dollars uh, to provide these services per year. That uh, here we are arguing over the MCO tax, we're arguing over whether we have services for IHSS, whether we're gonna restore their benefits, whether we're gonna take care of health care for, for poor children. This is one of those priorities that, while it may be a lofty goal, it may be a righteous goal, it's not more important than providing health care to our children, to our, the weakest members of our society. And for that reason, I won't be supporting it today. I hope if it does get passed that perhaps the governor will veto it and use this million dollars to go towards the, the money that he says he doesn't have for poor kids. I urge a no vote. Thank you. Any further discussion or debate? Seeing none, Senator Jackson, please close. Yes, thank you. Uh, given the fact that this is a state uh, that goes from up in Eureka down to San Diego, there are different parts of the state which have different wildlife that attracts tourists, that provides quality of life that allows for hunters and fisher people. Uh, this is uh, a, an extraordinary asset to the state. Uh, I, um, I believe that this is something that if you appreciate nature uh, and you recognize uh, the value of this extraordinary butterfly as part of our landscape, part of our culture, part of our economy, uh, you will join me in voting aye for this measure. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Aye. aye Anderson. No. no. Bates. No. Bell. Aye. aye. Berryhill. Aye. No. Block. Aye. aye. Canella. No. De Leon. Fuller. No. no. Gaines. No, Gaggiani. Aye, Glazer. Aye, Hall. Aye, Hancock. Aye, Hernandez. 
I Hertzberg, I Hill, I Hueso, I Huff, Jackson, I Lada, Leno, I Leva, I Lou, I McGuire, I Mendoza, I Mitchell, I Moni, I Morlock, No Morell, No Win, I Nilsson, No Pan, I Pavley, I Roth, I Runner, Stone, No Vidak, No Wykowski, I Walk. Senator Jackson moves the call. Colleagues, we have members uh, off the floor, and so we'll uh, be putting the next several measures on call until otherwise notified. Motions and resolutions. Pursuant to Senate Rule 29.10, the following bills are referred to the Rules Committee. Senate Bill 374, Senate Bill 705. Moving on to Senate third reading, we'll be taking up file items 56 through 61. Repeating, file items 56 through 61. We'll start with file item 56, SCR 80. Senator Runner, not at her desk. File item 57, Senate Bill 681. Senator Hill, pass on file. File item 58 has been dispensed with. Thank you. File item 59, SCA 8. Senator Mendoza, Mr. Secretary, please read. Senate Constitutional Amendment 8 by Senator Mendoza and Aquilina Counties. Senator Mendoza. Thank you, Madam President. Members, I'm here to present SEA 8. It is a bipartisan measure that will require that any county that has 2 million residents or more, based on the 2020 census, to add two seats to their Board of Supervisors. Currently, this would affect only five counties, although others may be affected by future census. Expanding the number of supervisor seats for the state's largest counties will provide the opportunity for these bodies to be more responsive and reflective of the needs of the people they represent and serve. SEA 8 has strong and effective cost control by restricting funding to, of the expanded board uh, on the 2020 to 2021 pre-expansion levels. To address concerns of the, uh, the, the bill was amended to permit adjustments annually uh, for changes in the consumer price index. This bill has bipartisan support. I would respectfully ask for your aye vote. Is there a debate or discussion on this item? Debate or discussion on file item 59? Senator Morlock. Thank you for your patience, Madam President. Um, this ballot measure proposal is totally unnecessary. It can be done easily by any county that has decided that five supervisors aren't enough. So it's a little awkward that we're asking the, all the voters of the state to go through the expense of imposing an expansion on a few select counties, none of which have even expressed a need for such a maneuver, and in fact, I don't think one supervisor has asked the author to write this bill. There might be motivations for expanding boards other than efficiency, but it's going to be expensive. It's going to be awkward. And it's really not necessary. L.A. County, as large as it is, is running fine with five county supervisors. Um, so here we are again, trying to fix something that isn't broken. Uh, I urge a no vote. Thank, thank you, Mr. Uh, Senator Morlock. Senator Leno. Thank you, Madam President. Colleagues, I think one important way to look at this bill and consider its policy implications is to, first of all, realize that we're talking about arbitrary numbers. How was the number five determined for county representation so many years, if not a century or more ago, as the state was first being founded. Landed on five. San Francisco is the only county out of the 58, of course, which is city and county, which has 11. We don't have a city council, so a reason for that, but that number also is arbitrary. But at what point does five 
not appropriately represent the entirety of the county. And I appreciate the Senator's comments that Los Angeles County is running fine, there are no complaints. That may be a 30,000 foot view of things, but I think the author is bringing this forward because on the ground, there are those who would feel they are not represented. And if Los Angeles County's current population is not sufficient to suggest that maybe the five might grow to seven, what number is appropriate? And I know this bill says two million or more, but is it five, is it 10, is it 15, at 20, at what point? I and we know that there are already conversations that our 120 member legislature may not be appropriately representing now California's near 40 million people. That's another conversation. I'm not here to suggest that we're not doing a fine enough job and that a million people is an impossible amount of people for each of us as 40 senators. But LA County supervisors represent many times more individuals than we do. So it is an interesting policy question. I'm not here to tell you that any one number is the right number. But I think that this bill has merit to it. And I know that by its very nature, it shakes up the status quo. And those who are currently in office or associated with those offices have a stake in protecting their turf and the status quo. But these large counties in California not only have much larger populations, they have much more diversity to those populations. Demographics have changed. And the question is, is this current system the absolute best way for everyone to be represented? I think that's the policy question this bill raises, and I think it's worthy of support, and I would ask for an I vote. Thank you, Senator Leno. Is there any further debate? We have uh, Senator Stone followed by Senator Weso. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam President. I had the honor of serving on the Riverside County Board of Supervisors for, for 10 years. Our population approximates about 2.3 million people, so we each represent about 500,000 people. As you know, we're separated by districts. And my colleagues have uh, not expressed to me that there's a problem. I had no trouble representing my constituents for 10 years and ensuring that they had the services that they needed, uh, especially in a county that's urbanizing more, where we're adding more cities. So they are getting more representation as more cities are planned and uh, pursuing cityhood in a county like mine, which is has been historically the fastest growing county in the state of California, and in all likelihood will surpass San Diego County and Orange County in the next 10, 15 years in population because that's where people are, are migrating. So it, it seems as though we've created a, an imaginary problem here in the legislature that we're being asked now to solve. I think any of those local governments, if they had issues, they'd be coming through CSAC, they'd be coming to us and clamoring for more representatives. But I like to have a decreased size of government. I don't want to expand the size of government. People feel that there's too much government intrusion in their lives, and adding seven supervisors in my county as opposed to five will be met with a lot of resistance. And for those reasons, uh, I would recommend a no vote on SCA 8. Thank you, Senator Stone. Senator Weso, followed by Senator Runner and Senator Allen. Thank you, Madam President. As the Vice Chair of the California Latino Caucus, I rise in support of this important measure. One thing is for certain, and may, that it may be that uh, the, uh, the supervisors in these boards are not necessarily complaining, but there, there is a lack of diversity on these boards. And uh, in particular, uh, you know, when you go down to these um, boards, they're not representative of the electorate that they serve. And that continues to be a problem in California. This bill will actually open the door for more diversity on these boards and, and more fair representation of the constituents they serve. This is a, a wonderful bill. We should always support representative government in every vote. This is one of those. This is an opportunity for you to support representative government and adding to the diversity of the boards that represent our communities. Everyone should join in in support of this bill. Thank you.
Thank you, Senator Wayso. Senator Runner. Thank you, uh, Madam President and members. Uh, I'm a co-author on this bill with uh, my fine senator from the LA area. And uh, I just wanna let my uh, Republican and Democrat colleagues know uh, for me, uh, living uh, on you know 60 miles north of Los Angeles County Supervisors, uh, we have a fine supervisor in my district. Uh, they each represent two million people, so that's twice the size. And we know what our constituencies and the difficulties are, uh, just meeting the needs of our almost a million people. Uh, so it's very difficult. I think a lot of the issues probably deal with LA County, maybe not Riverside, maybe not Orange County. Uh, we put a number on there to let people know this is only to go on the ballot. We're not, we're not telling people, we're letting people decide. It's not happening until after the census in 2020. So they have plenty of time to make that happen. Uh, in my mind, uh, unfortunately, I'd like to keep it that they keep the same budget uh, as they have and divide that among the seven instead of five. Uh, but in reality, in that before 2022, uh, when it would come into effect, uh, they'd have plenty of time to increase their budget so they'd be able to spread that out. So I'm not in favor of that, but I think they'd have plenty of opportunities. Because I have heard some from some county supervisors that they wouldn't mind it if they still had the budgets they had today, including some Riverside County uh, super, supervisors. So I think if that's the issue, but I think it's putting it to the vote of, of the people is what I'm in favor of. And I always continue to be in favor of putting things before the people and letting them decide. So I would urge and I vote for my colleagues on both sides of the aisle. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Runner. Senator Allen. Uh, members, I, I feel the need to kind of explain how I feel about this bill. And I've been talking to the author for quite a long time about this. And I supported him in committee as a courtesy. Uh, but my fundamental concern with this is uh, with, with structure within a county government. Uh, I think that I would sub absolutely, I agree with the diversity concerns that have been raised, and I would 100% support this measure if it were to add a, a, an elected countywide executive as part of the package. Here's the reason why I believe this. Ultimately, the, the larger you make a board, uh, it becomes more and more unwieldy when you don't have an executive, a strong executive as part of that mix. The, the county of Los Angeles is larger than 40 US states. And imagine those states being run by a legislature of five without a governor. So I think that this ultimately leads to an unwieldy governance structure. Uh, and, and that's why I regretfully you know, don't feel like I can support this measure on, uh, on, the, on the floor today. I would also mention that similar proposals have been brought up in Los Angeles several times and been voted down by the voters. Uh, but I would absolutely support this. I actually think it makes sense to do if we have an elected executive in a county like Los Angeles, because it is true that having only five members representing this entire county, which is so enormous, literally larger than 40 U.S. states, uh, is, is unwieldy. And I would certainly, if, if this is not able to get off the floor today or not able to pass the voters, I'd love to work with the author on something like that. Thank you, Senator Allen. Any further debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none, Senator Mendoza, you may close. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Again, I appreciate the conversation that we had in this important bill. Our counties have been in existence uh, on behalf of the state for the last 165 years. They've had the opportunity to increase their board representation from five, they have not. LA County, when it was first, uh, when it first became a county, it pretty much represented all of Southern California for that matter. The population was like 3,500 people. Having a population of 10 million, I think we're long overdue. You must keep in mind that counties do carry legislative and executive powers and responsibilities. They oversee vital services uh, to our residents, healthcare, public safety, traffic, other social services, parks, libraries, among other things. So their influence and their representation is very important to many of the residents on every one of our counties. Uh, but members, uh, this is, a, uh, I think, a, a bill that is necessary. 
And it's long overdue. I would uh, respectfully ask for your eye vote. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Mendoza. All debate having ceased. Mr. Secretary, please call the roll. Allen. Anderson. No. Allen. No. Anderson. No. Bates. No. Bell. Aye. Aye. Berryhill. Block. Aye. Aye. Canella. Aye. Aye. De Leon. Aye. Aye. Fuller. Gaines. Calgione. Aye. Aye. Glazer. Hall. Aye. Hancock. Aye. Hernandez. Aye. Hertzberg. Aye. Hill. Aye. Hueso. Aye. Huff. Jackson. Lada. Aye. Leno. Aye. Leva. No. Lou. Aye. McGuire. Aye. Mendoza. Aye. Mitchell. Monty. Aye. Morlock. No. Morell. No. Wynn. No. Nielsen. No. Pan. I Pavley, no Roth, Runner, I Stone, no Vidak, no Wykowski, I Walk, Walk I. Please call the absent members. Berryhill, Fuller, Gaines, Glazer, no Huff, Jackson, Mitchell, Roth. Roth, no. Senator Mendoza moves a call. File item 60, Senator De Leon. Senator De Leon, do you wish to take up file item 60? Senator De Leon, do you wish to take up file item 60? Assembly third reading, very well. We will start, colleagues, with file item 77. We are going to go 77, 80, 82, 87, and 90. Those are the first items that will be coming up. 77, 80, 82, 87, and 90. File item 77, Senator Hueso. Mr. Secretary, please read. Assembly Bill 1524 by the Committee on Utilities and Commerce and Act Relating to Electricity. Senator Hueso. Thank you, Madam President. Senators, AB 1524 extends the Attorney General's authority to represent the Electricity Oversight Board in any litigation or settlement to obtain ratepayer recovery for the effects of the 2000 to 2002 energy crisis for two additional years. Until, until it was defunded in 2008, the EOB was one of the complainants in energy crisis cases, along with the CPUC, the AG, and the three major investor-owned utilities. A, su a Supreme Court decision on April 21st, 2015, opened the door for further lawsuits against the energy companies for illegally manipulating natural gas prices during the energy crisis. As a result, there will be like there will likely be and continue to be additional state litigation relating to the energy crisis for which authority of the AG to represent the EOB will be required or needed. This bill simply seeks to extend for an additional two years the temporary authority given to the AG to represent the EOB so that it can continue to do what it has been doing under the existing authority, namely to sign off on financial sentiments relating to, the, to claims arising from the 2000 the 2002 energy crisis. I ask for your I vote for this important measure. Thank you, uh, Senator Hueso. Is there any debate or discussion on this item? Any debate or discussion? Seeing and hearing none. Is there any objection to sub? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We're going to take one vote through and then put m matters on call. One vote. Uh, Mr. Secretary, call the roll. Allen. Aye. Anderson. Aye. Bates. Aye. Bell. Aye. Berryhill. Aye. Block. Aye. Canella. Aye. De Leon. Fuller. Aye. Gaines. Aye. Galgioni. Glazer. Aye. Hall. Aye. Hancock. Aye. Hernandez. Aye. Hertzberg. Aye. Hill. 
Aye. Aye Hueso. Aye. Aye Huff. Aye Jackson. Aye. Aye Lada. Leno. Aye, Aye Leva. Aye. Aye Lou. Aye McGuire. Aye. Aye Mendoza. Aye. Aye Mitchell. Monning. Aye. Aye Morlock. Aye, Aye Morrell. Aye Wynn. Nelson. Win I. Nelson. I. Pan. I. Pavley. I. Roth. I. Runner. Stone. I. Vidak. I. Wachowski. Walk. Walk I. Senator Weiso moves a call.